quests to ripen now. Try hard not to be forgotten again. Welcome to the Grok Shop. In this video, I'll be showing how to repair an Intermatic photo controller. My particular unit was used to control some street lights, and they were staying on all the time. In this particular example, I'll be repairing the Intermatic 4121, but there's uh, quite a few different comparable models that work off the same principle. So the idea behind these is to provide dust to dawn control over a load, usually a light or some such. And um, the way they do that is they use thermal heating from a power resistor to heat a bimetallic strip and a photo resistor. And here you can see they claim uh, a reliable long life of operation, but of course long is a relative term, long compared to what? So this is one of the spec docs. And you can see here they show uh, wiring diagrams for your grid of choice. So now taking a detailed look inside this unit, the blue rectangle there would represent the Intermatic unit. You can see it's actually very simple. Everything in the unit is pretty durable, uh, except for the photoresistor. And photoresistors do wear out over time. Uh, they may uh, function, but they may lose their sensitivity. And um, this diagram is pretty good. I, I borrowed this from a, a forum and then modified it some, but it does show about the expected range of the photoresistor. And that's usually where the problem's gonna lie. So pretty much that's gonna be the game plan is to replace this photoresistor. Once you get the unit open, just trim it right out. Note that my old unit, I've actually taken it apart before. So you see some old silicone sealer on there. Um, I just did an adjustment before, didn't replace the photoresistor actually. So now with the photoresistor removed, we'll just take a quick measurement. You can see in full light here, or close to full light, it's about 80K. And then in darkness, it's about a mega ohm. And you remember back to the diagram, that's, uh, that's way above the range we need. We need something around 3 to 7K in full light. So photoresistors are dirt cheap. Um, I have some already. Um, I'll put a link to the ones I have. This is multiple ranges um, that come in different baggies and whatnot. But basically all we're gonna do is find one that's in the right range and um, solder it right in where the old one was. What I have here is some uh, solder that splattered on the floor that I just picked up and cleaned and I'm gonna uh, round it out to some little cylinders to sort of hold it in place. But any way you can um, get it on there is fine. You could actually just hold it with pliers and solder one side on, or if you have a, 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 one of those third hand tools, those are nice in a situation like this. But basically, um, you're just gonna have to get it soldered on right where the old one was. And then in addition to that, you wanna make sure that it sticks up right where your lens is. My lens is actually missing. I've got this piece of uh, clear plastic um, siliconed over, but uh, they come with a little plastic lens and you want to make sure it's right up close to it, but not necessarily touching it because it does get warm and it could potentially melt the bottom side of that. Since I have bare solder wrapped around, I'm just going to add on a little um, rosin flux. If you use just straight up uh, rosin flux core solder, that's fine too. Listen. If you want to be the best, you got to move and motivate. The little brown nub at the bottom of this leg of the photoresistor, that's your power resistor. And it's basically the heater that heats up the bimetallic strip. It's probably a good idea to keep it centered in the little J loop of metal there. Check out the crook I had to put in one leg of the photoresistor because I made it too long. 
Okay, now there's a hex adjustment screw at the top of this unit. Um, your hex driver needs to be able to fit in there with it all closed up, so check it out. If it doesn't fit, you may need to drill it out like I did, but it does need to fit in there with it all closed up. Okay, to seal the unit back up, I'm gonna use some liquid tape. Um, I like this because it dries really fast. And you can also use silicone, which is what I used the first time I had to take this apart. So the way the adjuster screw works is kind of like um, a preload on the uh, bimetallic strip. And so um, effectively you can control to some extent how soon um, the circuit activates and opens and uh, closes. So um, what I did rather than um, take it back out to the, to the field as as it were which is my um, main main circuit box coming into my house um, I decided just to wire it up to a lamp and um, and you can see here how I wired it up but basically the only tricky part is you need to make sure that um, your white and black go to neutral so in the US on a wall socket the, the neutral is the fat one are the one on the left usually um, in addition most ac power cords will have a little texture on the neutral part of the cable so those are some ways you can make sure you've got those uh, wired up properly so with the adjuster screw counterclockwise will tend to make the uh, circuit activate or your light to come on more quickly and clockwise will serve to um, make the light switch off more quickly so uh, with some testing with a little shade on there to make it go dark um, you should be able to get it dialed in to just the way you want it main thing is you got to remember there's a delay of up to a few minutes um, so like when you put the shade on you got to allow the circuit time to cool first before you make that adjustment so you don't want to end up over adjusting before letting the circuit cool or heat up depending on which way you're going so like i said for me um, this unit mounted to the uh, main box coming into my house and I have one separate breaker for the light um, that I'm going to try to operate with the photo control. Of course, if you go into your breaker box, uh, you do that at your own risk. And uh, my advice is basically don't do it unless you're, you're comfortable operating inside one of these boxes like this. But FYI, that big metal bar down the middle you don't want to touch that. But here you can see where my unit uh, mounts to the bottom of this box. It's pretty much in the shade all the time, which is um, gonna make my light tend to come on sooner rather than later. So I adjusted it way down to where it only comes on in absolute darkness. Okay, in a panel box like this, you connect the white wire up to the neutral bus, which is this uh, bus bar with all the screws in it here to the right. Now I connect the red wire to the load black wire.
And it'll connect the black wire from the Intermatic to the black wire from the uh, circuit breaker, which is also known as the hot wire coming in. It will be hot once the breaker's back on anyway. Okay, with the unit back in, flip the breaker back on, and of course at first the unit's cool, and when the light coming in to it uh, drops that resistance with the current coming in, it starts to warm up, and uh, here in a couple minutes we'll be in business. That's how it's done. Thanks for watching.